Okay. I got one more question right away. So we are talking about simplifying radicals first. We've simplified square roots, mm -hmm. right? If we simplify the square root of 45, we wrote that as the square root of 9 times 5. And then we said 9 is 3 times 3. So then it was 3 times 3 times 5, the square root of that. And because it was the square root, we were looking for pairs, right? Uh -huh. And that pair came outside the radical, and it was 3 radical 5. Yes. Okay. So now we're going to simplify cube roots and four root, fourth roots and fifth roots. So if I'm simplifying the cube root of 16, it's not a perfect cube, but 16 is 8 times 2, and 8 is 4 times 2 times the other 2, and that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now you could skip all the inter intermediate, but if it's a cube root, instead of looking for pairs, we're looking for a set of 3 of the same number, right? Because mm -hmm. that is a number to the third power. So we're looking for 3, a groups of 3 here, and I have 3 twos. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be 2, two, two cube root of 2. Okay. Mm. Oh, 2. I've actually wondered how you did that. Okay. So you leave the, oh, okay, no, I see it. Because this really ends up being the cube root of 2 cubed, right? Yeah. The two cube root of 2 cubed is just 2. Okay. Let's do the cube root of uh, 162. It's not a perfect, right? It's not. So let's pause for So, well, 162 we know is divisible by 2, right? Because it's even. So let's try and start there. If I divide it by 2, 16 divided by 2 is 8, and 2 divided by 2 is 1, so it's 81 times 2. Mm -hmm. That's 9 times 9. Which is, yes, 9 times 9 times 2. Just three times we, can three times three. Three. we can further split it. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 2. And it's cube roots, so I'm looking for a group of how many of the same number? Three. Three of the same number. I have three threes here. Six on the inside. Oh, six on the oh, six on the inside. Three, right? The cube root of three cubed. That's what three times three times three is, right? Mm -hmm. The cube root of three cubed. So that just equals three, and then we multiply back together the numbers that don't have a triple with them. Okay. So three cube root of six. Good? Let's try a fourth root now. Let's do the fourth root of the same number. The fourth root of 162. We can do the same. I can break it down the same, but it's going to give me a slightly different result, right? We're going to do three. Right? I'm just going to skip all the middle. Yeah. Um, so the question was, if I recognize this is the fourth root of 81 times 2, and I right away say, oh, I know the fourth root of 81 is 3. Can I write it as 3 fourth root of 2 without writing all, out all the products? And the answer is yes. Right? But some people need to see the product written out and like that better than um, just recognizing the perfect powers that go in there. So yeah, that's a good shortcut. So otherwise, I see four threes because it's a fourth root and I'm looking for groups of four, right? And fifth root, I'm going to look for groups of five. Now, the better I have my chart memorized, the easier this is going to be, right? So that's the fourth root of three to the fourth, which is three times the fourth root of two. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's try, we have the fifth root of 192 divided by the fifth root of sixth. Now, 
If we have the same root on top and the bottom, we might be able to make our life easier by dividing 192 by 6. And we might get a perfect um, power here. So let's see. What is 196 divided by 6? Because this, I can use my quotient property and write it as 192 divided by 6. 32. 32, which is the fifth root of 32, which is 2. And if you don't know the fifth root of 32, you write it all out when you're looking for groups of 5, right? But we should recognize immediately at least our powers of 2, right? Yeah. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. Those we should definitely have memorized, and we should at least have 3, 9, 27, and 81 memorized, yeah. right? Now I mean, I want more of the chart memorized, but those are the basics. And a lot of times we try to keep the numbers small, right, to the ones that you recognize um, faster. Um, let's do some more. So that was using our quotient property kind of backwards. And then we can also rationalized denominators. So let's talk about rationalizing. Denominators, denominators yes. Rationalizing denominators. So we'll look at, um, just let's say, the square root of 1 half. And remember how we rationalize that denominator, because we're not allowed to have radicals in the denominator. I can make that the square root of 1 over the square root of 2, which is 1 over the square root of 2, but we're not allowed to have that radical in the denominator. So to deal with that, we multiply the bottom by square root 2, and we multiply the top by square root 2. Because the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2 is 1. I haven't changed the value of that number. I'm just multiplying by 1 in a different form so that I can get the denominator to be 2. When I multiply the square root of 2 by the square root of 2, that gives me the square root of 4, which is 2. Right? So I have the square root of 2 over 2. That's rationalized. So we don't have to put the 1 in there? Uh, no, you don't need to write 1 square root 2. You won't get marked off if you do. Okay. So I'm going to go to a clean board here. What if it's the cube root of, um, let's say, 1 ninth? We'll start there. I can write that as the cube root of 1 over the cube root of 9, which is 1 over the cube root and I'm going to write that as 3 times 3. 9 is 3 times 3. With the square root, I could just multiply by the number that was in the denominator because I only need 2, right? Now I need to make sure I have a group of 3 down there. So I'm multiplying by 9 is not going to help me. Because yeah. 9 times 9 is 81, and 81 is in a perfect power of 3. What could I multiply by to make it a power of 3 in the denominator? By multiplying cube root of 3. Now I have three threes, right? So whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. Because that's multiplying by 1. And then we end up with this cube root of 3 over the cube root of 3 times 3 times 3. Right, And you can skip this step, but I want to make sure I show it to understand wh how we get there. The cube root of 3 cubed is just 3. So we have 3, or the cube root of 3 over 3. Um, yes. So let's say if, like, the after the 3, 9. Mm -hmm. Cube um, root of 9. What if, like, for some reason, like, the next step ended up being 4 times 4? Like, the, let's just say it ends up being 4 times 4. Would the other number we put right there, would that be a 4? Yeah. Okay. So let's do one where <laughs> we're just going to look at another one. Um, how about the fourth root of 19 over the fourth root of 4? Now it's fourth root. Of 
4 through to 19 can't be simplified. 19's prime, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I'm not going to worry about that for now. Can I break 4 down into a product of two smaller numbers? Yes. Yes. 2 times 2. Okay. I need 4 of the same number to take a fourth root, right? Uh -huh. So how many 2's do I need to multiply the denominator by so that I have 4? More. Two more. So I'm going to multiply by the fourth root of two times two. You, just put four. you can just put four. Yeah, you can just put four. That's fine. So now I have the fourth root of 19 times four over the fourth root of two times two times two times two. And again, you can skip writing that all out. You could just multiply 19 times four, which is 76. Fourth root of 76 over 2. Because don't I have three, four twos? The fourth root of 2 to the fourth is 2. Right? This is the fourth root of 2 to the fourth power, and that's just 2. Oh, yeah, because that would equal that. Right, because there's four of them. Right? Can you just put the number as soon as you have the group? Yes. Um, do we want to do, yeah, let's do some more. This, how about the fifth root of seven over the fifth root of eight? In general, we try to keep the numbers small because it can get really, really big. You want to, let's try, why don't you try this one on your own? Okay. So try this one on your own. And then we'll come back and do it together. Okay, so we should have broken the 8 down into 2 times 2 times 2 at least, right? Uh, yes. And then I have three 2s. How many 2s do I need? Five. 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 I need 5 because of my, right, my index. Uh -huh. It's a fifth root, so I need 5 of them. How many am I going to multiply by so that I have 5? Two, 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 two more of them. So I can multiply by 4. If you want to write 4, you can. I've just tried this lesson by other ways, and this seems to make it clearest when you just break it down and how many I need, okay? And so that's 7 times 4, which is the fifth root of 28 in the numerator. And this all becomes the fifth root of 2 to the fifth, which is just 2. So my denominator is 2. And that's the final goal. The final goal is to get the denominator to not have a radical, okay? Questions. So why should the denominator never be a radical? It's just one of our rules in math. We don't put we don't leave fractions in the denominator. We don't leave imaginary numbers in the denominator. We don't leave radicals in the denominator. So it's just like the way um, we've decided the final answer should be. Well, I say we know. like I had anything to do with it, but. No, <laughs> Well, that's bad. Okay. Um, let's talk about our rules of exponents. No, I think she did that. She was answering question. Same rules of exponents we worked on on the quiz, but now the exponents are fractions. <clears throat> our rules of exponents tell us when we are multiplying powers, we... Do what with our exponents? Add. Add, right? So multiplication, we add the exponents. Division of powers, what do we do with the exponents? We subtract. And power to a power, we multiply. Negative exponents mean? Reciprocal. And the zero always equals one. Yes, Samantha. Um, did we have like the fractions on homework 17? Yes, there were fractions on homework 17, and I did them in the video. So I think they all had common denominators. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, so it's the same thing as we did before. The rules don't change, but now we're asking you to actually use fractions. Okay, so fractions aren't going to go away. We got to get better with them. The exponent rule says I just need to add my exponents, which means I have to add one third plus one sixth. And I can't just add the top and add the bottom. I have to make them the same denominator, right? So how am I going to do that? What denominator is the least common denominator for three and six? Six. Six. Two. Two is the, two is the factor, right, that they have in common. But six will be the least common multiple. And to get that, what am I going to multiply one third by? Two over two, right? So that my denominator will now be six. So I have two sixths plus one sixth, which is three sixths, which reduces to one half. Is my final answer one half? No. no. My final answer is 13 to the one half power. Okay. Will we put that in the. And then do we square reading? No, I don't need. No. Here's the rule, unless it's asking you to write it from a fractional exponent to a radical or a radical to a fractional exponent. If the problem starts with fractional exponents, your answer should be in fractional exponents. Okay. Right? If it starts as radicals, your final answer should be a radical. And the same is true for fractions and decimals, and this is why we had that issue on the CASP. That question we went over was a fractions. Right? So if you have fractions in the problem, you need to answer with fractions. If you have decimals in the problem, you need to answer with decimals. Okay? Just as a general rule. Okay? All right, let's look at another one. Um, 5 to the 1 fifth power times 8 to the 1 fourth power all to the fifth power. Can I combine yeah. when I have different bases? No. 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 So what pa what um, property is this? No. Is it multiply? I can't combine those, so I can't use the multiplication property. They don't have the same base. Power, power to a power, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to multiply my exponents times 5. Right? Here's my extra power. Yeah. Power to a power. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to multiply my exponents. One-fifth times five. Put a one over it. What do I get? Five to the one. And then eight to the one-fourth times five over one. Five over four. That's it. That's my final answer. I can't combine my bases. So that's all I have. Yeah. Wouldn't, couldn't, can't we take the one fifth and the one fourth and make them common denominators? And then combine those? But you still don't have, so we can't ma make them common denominators. I mean, we can, but it's not going to help us because I don't have the same base. The oh, base okay. of my power is not the same, so I can't combine that together. Okay. okay. I thought you meant bases in like the denominator. I was like, what? No, the base of the power. Remember that in a power we have like seven to the fifth. This is my base. And this is my exponent. Okay. These are together a power. Okay. So the base has to be the same in order to use the multiplication like those properties. Okay. Let's do another one. Twelve cubed times nine cubed to the negative one third power. So it's very similar to yes, the one we just did, right? Power to a power. Three times one third is what? Uh, three, no. 
negative 1, right? I did 3 times 1 third, and then I'm going to do 3 times negative 1 third. So I get 12 to the negative 1, oops, times 9 to the negative 1, which is 1 over 12 times 9. Now that I don't have an exponent other than 1 on my numbers, I can put them together because I'm just multiplying 12 times 9, which is 108. Let's look at 56 to the 1 fourth over 8 to the 1 fourth. And I'm going to make that to the negative 3 power. And then that addresses Samantha's question about what if we have a fraction and a negative exponent? Okay. Now we have the same exponent here, right? Yes. Let's see my lightsaber. <laughs> okay. We have the same exponent. So I can actually use my um, quotient property in reverse. I can write this as 56 over 8 to the 1 fourth because the exponents are the same. So if the exponent's the same, I can bring the exponent out and put it together into division, and that usually helps me to simplify. Because 56 divided by 8 is what? 7 to the 1 fourth. Okay, instead of having to, and I could have flipped the fraction in the beginning and made it 8 to the 1 fourth over 56 to the 1 fourth, all to the positive 3, and that took care of that negative exponent. Okay, so I still have that negative exponent out there, so this is going to become 1 over 7 to the 3 fourths power. Yes. If there was an x next to the 7, actually, not in this case. Because the 7 is in the parentheses that is oh, getting this okay. exponent. So it would be 7 like cubed seven. on the bottom. Right. Um, so here's the problem. Doesn't the fractional exponent represent a radical? Yes. Yeah. And am I allowed to have radicals in the bottom? Oh. No, and I'm not allowed to have fractional exponents in the denominator either. Mm -hmm. So I can multiply by something that would make the bottom 7 to the 1 power. 4 over 3. Uh, 4 over 3 would work if I was multiplying my exponents, but when I multiply powers, I add, right? So I need to multiply by 7 to the 1 fourth. Because 3 fourths plus 1 fourth gives me 1, so my denominator will be just 7 to the 1 power. And then my top would just be 7 to the 1 fourth. Or whatever is on top times 7 to the 1 fourth. Yeah, that's a nice little trick in there. OK, the next is multiplying radicals. The thing about multiplying radicals is they have to have the same index. They have to both be cube roots, both be square roots, both be fourth roots. I can't multiply together a fourth root and a fifth root. To do that, I'd have to make them fractional exponents, get the common denominator, OK? But we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to leave it. If it's in radical form, we're going to leave it radical form. So if I have, say, the cube root of 4 times the cube root of 128. Yes, my product property says if I have the same radicals, I can multiply what's underneath together. So 4 times 128 is 512. Close, not 6. It's 8. Cube root of 512 is 8. 216 is, this, is 6 cubed. So I can just multiply the numbers under the radical. Yeah, just break it down, right? 
if all else fails, you can break it down into two and two and two, and you're going to get uh, three groups of three twos, and you'll end up with eight. No, it's like, well, like when you hear, okay. when, when you're talking, it doesn't sound bad, but then when you hear your own voice, you're like, oh, no. Oh, so you're not talking about not <laughs> wanting to hear my voice. Oh, no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> oh. As it's recording. <laughs> it's okay. It'll, it'll make Donnie and <laughs> Brian <laughs> happy. <laughs> Nothing changed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so there's one like this in the homework, and we're just going to put it together and see what happens. So we got the cube root on the top. This is the cube root of 54, right? And in the bottom, we have the sixth root of 4. And I can't have that. Okay, so we need four more twos, right? To make their six. Yes. So that's 16. Right, the bottom we have two. Now, we can actually simplify this a little bit. Watch. If I take this and I write that as 2 to the 4th to the 1 6th power, what did I just do? I wrote 16 as 2 to the 4th, right? And then I made it a fractional exponent. Because what is 4 sixths? Or no, what the heck, two thirds. Two thirds. So I have now two to the two thirds, which is the cube root of two squared instead. So now it's the cube root of 54 over two, and now my radical's the same. That's why fractional exponents are awesome, because they allow us to do stuff we can't do with radicals. And so 54, let's see. Let's break that down as 9 times 6. And we'll bring the 2 times 2 in here, the 2 squared. Still all over 2. I might have to come out this way. The cube root of 3 times 3 times 6 is 3 times 2, and then the 2 times 2. So see my 9, my 6, and my 4? Yeah? yeah? 9, 6, 4. And now do I have groups of three in here? Oh. So this is three times two over two, which is three, six divided by two. Okay, that's about as complicated as it's gonna get. Okay. Okay, and the homework. It's page 248, 3 to 27 odd. I'm so glad we're not going farther than that. So for those,